Hey everyone, it's Canel, and I'm back with 10 more tips for playing Stone Shard. If you're completely new to the game, I would still recommend you go back and watch my 10 beginner tips for Stone Shard video, because even though the game has had a fair few changes with the Troll Slayer update, a lot of the basic principles I talk about still apply to the game, and I won't be going over them all again in this video. The tips here will both expand on those tips, and provide some brief alterations to a couple of my original suggestions, as well as discuss what the Troll Slayer update changes mean for players and how they may approach the game. This will no by no means be an exhaustive overview of the Troll Slayer update, as there's plenty of other sources that you can get that from, but really just a quick list of 10 things that you probably want to know as you're traversing through the game that will help you survive a little bit more effectively. Without any further ado, let's get right into it. Tip number one, the importance of skill books. Skill books, or treatises as the game refers to them, are books that you can find and buy throughout the world of Stone Shard. Each skill tree is unlocked through the reading of a treatise. The progression is fairly straightforward. Treatise 1 is the earliest skills in a given skill tree, Treatise 2 unlocks the next tier, and so on. All characters start with some level of skill specialization in five different categories, viewable from the character selection screen when you start a new game. These starter specializations used to be the equivalent of reading the first two treatises in a given skill tree. Skill books have always been important, but even more so now. Since the Troll Slayer update, you only start with the skills given by the first tier books, so while it can still be beneficial to try and specialize in one tree above all others, this means that unless you can find or afford a tier 2 book for your chosen skill tree, you'll likely need to diversify your array of skills much earlier than pre-update. This may seem to make the game a bit more difficult, but this has also opened up the necessity to try a variety of different builds and skill combinations. Now, by all means, have a general idea of what type of character you want to build and focus your efforts in that direction, but also be mindful of the other skill trees and how these skills, particularly the new skill trees such as Combat Mastery and Athletics, um, can help you survive and how they synergize with your weapon or defensive skills like shields. Tip number two, know your resistances. Obviously, there's only so much you can do regarding an enemy's resistance. Take skeletons for example. They don't bleed and have resistance to slashing damage as well as poison damage. But I'm wielding an axe with Yorgrim and my skills are built around using that weapon. Should I switch to a mace when taking on skeletons? Not necessarily, no. Although if you've diversified your build in a combat mastery and shield, this could probably work. It just wouldn't be my first choice. I can't think of many situations in Stone Shard where there's only one way to approach a problem, but instead of doing that, be mindful of your enemy's resistances and adjust your approach to combat accordingly so that you can have the best engagement possible. We already do this by kiting enemies or bottlenecking multi-enemy engagements, so of course resistances play a role in that. Maybe you ultimately just need to be more cautious because it will take a few extra attacks to take down an enemy based on those resistances. Or maybe you need to be more careful in controlling your spacing with the enemies, so you can afford to use a support item between fighting multiple enemies instead of immediately engaging again. Maybe the order of using your abilities will change, using your defensive abilities rather than the offensive ones. Much like a lot of these tips when it comes to combat, it's rare that one piece of advice will be applicable to 100% of the situations you face in the game, but ultimately, this tip can be summarized by simply saying you should right click and inspect the enemy before every fight. Eventually you'll get to know which enemies have which abilities and resistances, but until then, take your time and assess the situation so you can plan each engagement accordingly. Tip number three, cooking. Cooking was always present in Stone Shard to some degree, but its importance has been expanded with the new update. More items can be affected by cooking and you'll find more cookable items in the wild now, especially since all animals will now drop meat. You need to experiment a little bit here to see what effect cooking has on mushrooms, vegetables, and meat to make it more beneficial in terms of basic things like its effect on hunger, but also additional effects to attributes like health restoration, morale, sanity, immunity, etc. Even some items that appear untouchable, like the deathcap mushroom, could have some role to play in your inventory, albeit in the most desperate of desperate situations. This is an aspect of the game that will develop over time, so it's important to start paying attention to it now, as future additions and updates made will only increase the different possibilities regarding food in the game and add to its complexity. Tip number four, grave robbing. A new feature added with the Troll Slayer update is the ability to dig up graves for loot. Now, excitement aside from having a new method of accumulating loot in Stone Shard, it's important to understand the actual impact of grave robbing so you know when to embark on these activities. The first thing you should know is that you should use a shovel. Although you can use your hands to dig up graves, this will take significantly more time than using a shovel and will also cause some damage to your hands, impacting your current health points as well as adding a chance for injury to your hands. So grab a shovel and dig away, right? 
Not necessarily. Pay attention to your morale and sanity on the character sheet. Looting graves will have a negative effect on both, so you need to be mindful of when you choose to embark on your grave robbing escapades, or at least have the necessary supplies to correct your mental state during or after you've got your fill of loot from the dead. But in the end, it can all be worthwhile as some graves spawn with very high tier loot that cannot be found or bought anywhere else in the game. These drops are rare, so naturally I never get any of these ones, but I've heard about them. So the possibility of finding unique equipment unavailable anywhere else in the game should be motivation enough to give grave robbing a try. A last little note is that shovels do take up a fair bit of space in your inventory, and I've found quite frequently you can come across shovels in the wild, often near the locations where you might want to start digging up graves anyway. Just thought I'd give some extra information. Tip number five, blessings. Blessings can offer a nice little boost lasting for 600 turns. The blessing provides a morale change, a sanity change, both accumulating over time, as well as unholy resistance and received experience for the duration of the blessing. Now, obviously the great big boost is the experience gain, but it's important to sort of plan it out and think, hey, I can get this unholy resistance before I go into a crypt or somewhere that you know you're gonna be encountering enemies that use unholy attacks. Now, these blessings can be acquired in two ways at the moment. The first way, and probably the first that you'll encounter, is by activating roadside shrines in the game world. These spawn at different locations along the road every time you start a new game, much like everything else in the Stone Shard world. The second way is to earn a blessing at the chapel in Manshire, where you can pray for blessings. Obviously, this is easier to find, but since you typically don't go to Manshire right at the beginning of a new game, you'll probably run into a roadside shrine before you get to the chapel. The other point of interest regarding blessings is that currently, not all characters can be affected by them. This is specifically Yorgrim the Dwarf, who worships different gods, as he'll tell you if you try and get a blessing from the shrine. Not all races and people in the world of Stone Shard pray to the same gods, and the pantheon of gods in Stone Shard will be fleshed out over time, so we can only speculate how that will specifically be implemented, but for now, Yorgrim will have to go without a random blessing boost, but given his distaste for the false gods, I doubt it's going to bother him all that much. Tip number six, hidden mini quests. A lot of new dialogue has been added to the game since the Troll Slayer update, so even experienced players should take the time to go through these dialogue options. Both new players and veterans to the game should pay attention to the dialogue as it can reveal a couple of hidden quests or tasks that the player can accomplish in the game world that have been recently added. Now I'm not going to give any spoilers or guides on where to get these quests or how to accomplish them exactly, but beyond the dialogue options, I'd pay close attention to random items that you may encounter at points of interest and other locations around the game world that are described as being of potential interest to some character. The benefits of these quests vary and will be revealed to you the more you play the game, so basically this tip boils down to just be attentive and be on the lookout for these different opportunities. Tip number 7, Reputation. If you notice, the Reputations tab is still inaccessible and tagged unavailable in the beta. However, this doesn't mean that Reputation doesn't still exist in the game in some capacity, albeit existing in the background. Reputation affects the prices for all shops in the respective village and the quality of available items. This includes both buying from and selling to the merchants. The quality of items available depends on your reputation level, obviously. For example, if you wanted to buy a Pyromancer staff, you need to reach the Respect Reputation level in Manshire before it starts appearing in the shop. Your reputation is increased by completing contracts, and these reputation levels can be seen in the chart that I'll be providing here. So, as I mentioned, your reputation isn't fully implemented in Stone Shard, so how can you know your reputation level? How can you track it? Well, whenever you deliver a quest or use a heraldic note, you will get a short entry in your log at the bottom left of the screen. This entry in the log is generally vague, saying either your reputation is improved or declined if you failed to complete a contract in the required time limit. However, when you reach a new reputation tier, it will also specify that you've reached a new tier and what that tier is. Also, if you happen to notice that the stock of the merchants has improved in terms of quality, then you've probably increased your reputation level. Also, if you start to notice that you're getting better value or better prices, that's another indicator as well. Tip number eight, fast travel. Traveling between Osbrook and Manshire can be a little tedious. The road is long, filled with ambushes, packs of wolves, and other distractions that, once you've dealt with them one or two times, start to become something you'd rather just forego and get on with the rest of your adventure. Well, luckily for you, the caravan awaits. After assembling the caravan, by accomplishing the initial portion of the Gathering the Caravan quest, you have access to a caravan that can shuttle you between the two current towns of Stone Shard, bypassing some of the tedious grind that you may begin to experience as you progress in level. This is less of a tip and maybe more just of a PSA, in case you're unaware of this availability in the game, particularly for newer players, if you're getting bogged down in the early game and you're playing permadeath and maybe not surviving to complete those quests, you might start to feel that the game is a bit of a slog through the wilderness after a while, but don't give up. Once you get through those first three contracts, you can start to use those trips 
to get between your locations a lot quicker. In the meantime, use those trips through the wild to improve your basic understanding of the game and improve your ability to deal with ambushes, engage or avoid packs of wolves, and when you've completed those contracts, you'll be able to forgo all of that and access the fast travel mechanic. Tip number nine, EQing the music. Now, this isn't really a gameplay thing, but just a little bit of a sidetrack tip here. Depending on the sound quality of your headset or speakers, you may not have noticed, but Stone Shard actually does have a really, really cool soundtrack, at least in my opinion. A lot of the time though, it's not all that audible, especially if there's other stuff going on in the game. Certainly the battle music and area specific indicators, like finding the witch's hut or other special points of interest, do stand out for most people. But there's a lot of ambient music and other tracks that I found haven't really stood out with the default audio settings. Anyway. If you're hearing this and thinking there's more songs than just the battle music, then go to the audio settings and tinker a little bit to find what mix works best for you. I basically just left the music settings where they were and decreased all of the other audio volume settings down until I found a balance that worked for me. So if you are interested in hearing more of the music that Stone Shard has to offer, take a look at your audio settings. And finally, tip number 10, and not really a tip, but more just a statement of fact, the troll is difficult, so come prepared. This tip is pretty self-explanatory. The troll is difficult, so come prepared for the fight, and be a fairly high level as well. The devs recommend between levels 12 and 15, but I've seen players who were a lower level than that be able to overcome it, and also players a little bit higher still struggling. But beyond being a sufficient level, what this means is medical supplies that provide both instant healing effects, such as splints, salves, or potions, as well as items that provide effects over time, are important to bring. Ideally, you will be able to avoid many of the troll's attacks, but being able to sustain yourself in battle is vital as the troll has a lot of health, and this will be a lengthy engagement. When it comes to actually fighting the troll, this can be achieved with any character and any build within reason. I'm sure it's possible to build something so incredibly incompetent that beating the troll at level 30 is impossible, but I'm pretty sure someone on the game's discord said they managed to beat the troll while dual wielding shields, so I'm sure anything is possible. At first glance, it's tempting to stay at a distance from the troll because, well, it's a troll, and looks like it could crush you with one swing of its arm. And if you were to encounter a creature like this in the real world, if it existed, that would probably be true. But Stone Shard, of course, is a game, so you can approach the fight in a variety of different ways. But the most important thing you need to do is understand the troll's attacks and their area's effect, because he does have area effect attacks. If you are able to do this, you will have a lot of success dodging most of the troll's attacks and limiting the overall damage you take, because when you do get hit by them, they tend to do a fair amount of damage, so do your best to avoid taking as many hits as possible. Like all of my tips, they are just suggestions and general tips to get you thinking about the game with an attentive mindset, so I'm not going to give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to cheese your way through the troll, but just keep this in mind that he does have area effect attacks, you can dodge them, and you are going to need to whittle him away in terms of damage because he does have a lot, so it's going to be a long fight, so be mindful of his attacks. Anyway, if you keep these points in mind, you too will become a troll slayer. That's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you find these tips useful when playing Stone Shard. Are there any tips I missed? Of course. So leave your tips in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like and subscribe button so you can get more content like this in the future. Also, I typically stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday on Twitch, link in the description, often playing Stone Shard. So come follow me on Twitch to get notified when I go live, and feel free to ask questions in the chat where either myself or one of my viewers, who are generally really knowledgeable about the game, more so than myself probably, can provide helpful tips as well. Thank you very much for watching, hope to see you next time.